So what is going on guys, Nando Prince 93 here with another video and today, I know I've been saying this a lot recently, but this is the coolest like iPad OS tweak that I have come across as of yet. You know, aside from like the big ones that came with the original iPad OS uh, software, this one came, became available with iPad OS 13.3. So if you're on it on 13.3, if you're a beta developer on 13.3 or later, this little tweak it will work for you and so apparently this was a feature that was in mac os and it's been around in mac os for a while and it's like something called hot corners and dwell control so you guys i've told you guys the how you can use them you can now use a mouse through accessibility and through the touch features and i've you know spoken before about how you can uh, customize the, the hotkeys on individual mice uh, through the native kind of ios applications right it's, you still can't really do much in terms of customization on the mouse for third party Applications, some have the support, some don't. If you guys want a video on apps that do support mouse on the iPad, let me know and I'll definitely do some research and find that out for you. But this one is very, very cool. So like I said, with this mouse, I have this middle button, takes me to the, takes me to the home screen. If I double tap it, I go to multitasking. I use these for volume rockers. And then the right click just brings out that accessibility menu with the six options. But if you wanna go even further into customizing your mouse experience, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now and we're just going to scratch the surface of what this is capable of. So I'm going to switch over to the iPad right now and kind of screen share and show you guys what to do. And if you guys find this useful, comment below because I think this is going to be useful for a lot of people depending on what you need it for. So here we go. So we're on the computer, guys. And if you guys can tell, if I'm moving the, the mouse around, right? So and if you guys can look really closely, I'll zoom in. You see that little white bar that kind of moves around. There's like a timer kind of going off. I'm going to show you guys why that's happening. So let's go into settings, go into accessibility. Uh, make sure assistive touch is on, obviously, right? So you go into this menu. So right now, right now it's off. I'm going to go turn it on. And then the mouse appears, right? And what I was talking about was this thing called dwell control. So I'm going to turn it off for now. So basically what dwell control allows you to do is pick, you know, points on the screen and assign actions to it. So basically if you go into the hot corners, right? So hot corners obviously means the corners of the iPad you can now customize what happens when you go into those corners. So right now I have top left is my app switcher, top right is a shortcut. So it, it's implemented with Siri shortcuts and I have a shortcut that allows me to go to Google and use the Google Assistant. Bottom left, I'm gonna use a screenshot and bottom, bottom right is for the spotlight search, right? So instead of physically touching with your finger or physically like dragging down with the mouse while holding, it, holding the button down, and now makes it even easier. And again, these are accessibility features. So it's supposed to make it easier for you to use a device if you don't want to you know physically interact with it so if we turn it on right and then keep in mind so i have to play around with this so you can set how long it takes for each of these actions to occur so right now i have it at two seconds and that's what that little timer is that's what that little thing moving around is so if i up the time to you know five seconds you can see that the timer is moving a lot slower if i move it back down you'll see how that it goes extremely fast Right, so boom, and there it goes. But also keep in mind, if dwell control is on and the timer is on, if you leave the mouse pointer over something, right, so it's at two seconds, it, it like automatically clicks on it for you. So just know that it's not just for dwell control. If you set up dwell, dwell control and you have a timer and you leave your mouse kind of sitting there, then it will click on whatever the mouse is over. So just keep that in mind. So if, I'll show you guys again, if I go down to Where's the accessibility? If I just leave it there for two seconds, it'll take me to accessibility, right? If I scroll down, leave it there for two seconds, it'll take me to the touch interface. It'll take me to assistive touch if I just leave it there. I'm not clicking anything, but it's at that two second timer, right? So you guys saw that the hot corners are set up. We'll go back, we'll go back to the home screen. So if I, you're using this dwell control, you go to the top left, you leave it there for those two seconds, and then boom, app switcher shows up. Go bottom right, I forgot what I set it up as, Boom, the spotlight search comes on. Leave it here in the bottom left. It should take a screenshot. Look, boom, took a screenshot for us. So in the top right, it'll bring me to the Siri shortcut for Hey Google. So let's get out of that. And you guys will see that there's a lot of customization and I haven't even like, like I said, scratched the surface of it, right? So let's say I don't, let's say I don't want Google to show up. These are all the different customizable actions that you can do. You can even restart the app, which you know, I don't know, I wouldn't even trust it with that. You can do volume up and down, scroll, dress, scroll gestures are allowed. You can enable dictation and fallback, tap. And then like I said, here are all the Siri shortcuts that it's integrated with. 
And from my understanding, you can also change the movement tolerance because you can, ideally, you can even shake it and assign an action to when you shake the, the, the mouse. And then also, if you want to, as, like I told you guys, the timer is on, so every time you move the mouse, the timer kind of resets and clicks on whatever it's under. The fallback action will be to pause dwell. So if you do that, it won't do that anymore. So, so if you set the pause dwell option, it won't have that timer on anymore, but it should still allow the hot corners to exist. So if I go, if I go top left, you see the timer is going on for two seconds and boom, you're back into the app switcher. And so th that's pretty much what you're getting with this new feature. And I think it's very, very useful and it's only gonna grow in my opinion. So definitely try it out. Maybe you, there won't be too many use cases for you, but I do think that especially with the hot, like if you have a hot corner, right? And you click on one of them, there's a scroll action. So you can scroll to the right and left. So let's say I'm in, I'm in a LumaFusion tab, right? And I just hold it to the bottom right. It'll start scrolling my timeline over for me. So I think that's good. And it, there's gonna be a lot more use cases as time goes on. Because remember, this only came out with 13.3. So that is a feature that I wanted to share with you guys. Like I said, it's, it's very new. It'll take a little while to get used to, but it's just another way to customize and another way to interact with the device, which I think Apple is doing a great job of. Obviously, the mouse isn't perfect yet. The support isn't always there. Like I do wish I could use a Logitech application that you can run on Mac OS and Windows with this MX Anywhere mouse. But unfortunately, you can't with iPad OS or any iOS devices yet. And you might not be, ever be able to, but Apple is obviously making a case that a mouse is more than just an accessibility feature. It can be used for, every, for everybody on a day-to-day -day workflow basis. And I think it's just gonna continue to get better. So hopefully you guys found this fact useful, you guys found this trick useful, and I really, really like it. Like I said, the Hot Corners idea is not new. Apparently it was in Mac OS and it still is, and I didn't really know about it because I didn't even think to use something like that. But now I think it's gonna be very useful moving forward for me because I'll, I'll change the app switcher or the, the duration of how long that dwell control lasts. I'll change it to like half a second so it moves quickly. And I'll also leave it so if it stays stagnant, it doesn't just randomly start clicking on stuff. So like I said, very customizable, very useful, and hopefully help somebody out, guys. So that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We're almost at 3,500 subs, which is insane. If we can get there by the end of the year, that'd be awesome. So thank you so much, guys. And until next time, peace.